Is there anything that sucks about this podcast? What's that? It's on it's fucking Monday. Monday. I think you just know it's a Monday. You, you can always can... switch days if you want. No. Three. It just reminds me of how much shit we got left in the week. One. Here we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bring in the couch. <laughs> 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 and do our grot squats. Yeah, exactly. So, Jessica, we honor. Yes. What's the mm-hmm. deal? Yeah. So, yep. you got to speak up. Yes, yes. Uh-huh. People so, can hear you now. So I was watching <laughs> that, uh, you know, I don't like to get too much into politics at this juncture of my career, but um, watching the Kavanaugh stuff. I'm not watching it. I, I'm, I'm listening to it, like, through third parties. So Do you see any of it at all? No. I'm, I, it gets my blood pressure up. He um, he mentioned beer a lot, like you know, even asking the senators on the panel, "Do do you drink beer?" When they were asking him about, I don't know how beer came into play because I I watched the whole thing, but they they had this little montage of him, and he mentions beer like seventy times. <laughs> 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 Yeah. The Kavanaugh beer dub remix. Um, I can see it now. And then uh, my favorite part of it was Senator Lindsey Graham, who's a Republican, like just completely went off. He was so angry. He mm-hmm. my age so angry. They, they SNL'd him um, <laughs> this week. They did a whole Kavanaugh thing. Oh, I'm where, sure. Where Matt Damon played Kavanaugh. Nice. That was funny. <laughs> I'll put I'll put my bets on that he gets confirmed. They're just busting balls. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. It's, it's pure politics. Oh, if you go, if you go back to Clarence Thomas, it's uh, you know, do you remember when he was put? On oh, the, he was run through the ringer. Run through. The ringer. I remember the audio clip as clearly as yesterday. It was and there was a pubic hair. On my Coke. Yeah, what was her name? Anita. Something. Anita. Oh, Baker, Baker. Yeah, I had the Anita, but I don't got the second part. Baker, maybe. Anita Baker. No. No, I think that's a singer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I remember that. And, and that poor guy, man, he got run through the ringer. Yeah, and he came out and basically said, look, this is the most disgusting thing of all time and blah, blah, blah. I think they've, they've won up themselves with this whole deal. Yeah, this is kind of a circus. Um, I don't want to get into it too much. Eh, if it's just for the sheer entertainment value, but you know, I just I, I believe in shooting straight with people, and it's just Washington doesn't shoot straight with anybody. Ever. Oh, so apparently they had the information about this woman about three weeks before it was even presented. Yeah, and it was leaked via a third party and somebody that's tied to San Francisco, I believe, and yeah, you know how not that, throwing yeah. any names out there, but yeah. You, you know how that works, right? Oh, so. it was, yeah. It's a cluster right from the beginning. I, 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 I bet he'll get confirmed. I just want to put a, put a show on. Um, you know, Trump's kind of backed off of it just in case he doesn't make it through, I guess. Well, I mean, they asked for an FBI investigation. Trump's like, yeah, okay, we can do that. I right, said, so do whatever you want to do. Yeah. No limitations. Oh. Mm. Wink, wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> well, the FBI, I don't know. They they haven't they haven't exactly shown themselves to be stellar, upstanding people over the last well, couple of years. Well, there a couple podcasts ago. We were talking about that, that guy, right? The, mm-hmm. uh, the FBI guy. It's just a story that just keeps on giving. Mm. It just keeps going and going. I mean, you think there's one more dirty trick that they can play? You don't think there's one more trick they can play, and they pull pull out a whole new hat. Uh, it's a definition of politics, right? It is. If you remember when John Roberts was put in, and he is the uh, Supreme Court leader, um, he was put in by George Bush Jr. Oh, was he? And um, I think that the big vote that he had... They were voting on something that was very, you know, divisive, if you will. I can't recall exactly what it is. And anyway, he he voted sort of on the liberal leaning end of it, <clears throat> which obviously they didn't expect out of a Republican esque, you know, well, a 
conservative leaning, as I would say. Right. Uh, judge, what was that topic? Do you remember that topic? It wasn't but a couple of years ago. I don't know. He, he voted f- for it. Anyway, nonetheless, politics. Politics still suck. Yep. <laughs> there you go. Office politics, Washington politics, state politics. I was going to throw my hat in the ring, but, you know. Local politics. <laughs> Plan be bald. <laughs> so what you got? What's going on? I don't know. I heard uh, there was an earthquake over in Indonesia on mm. Friday night. Saturday morning, something created like that. a little tsunami recently. Holy moly! Yeah, the earthquake on one side of the bay there set off like I don't know, was that north and east, and then it sent the shock wave across the bay with the tsunami and blew out the other side of the bay. I mean, just totally devastated the other side of that portion of Indonesia. It's like a little, yeah, a little you know bay area in there, but yeah, like a thousand people are dead or something like that. That's it. I think there's more, and they just haven't dug them all out yet. There's a mm. lot of people trapped in the rubble and stuff. So Tsunami's very, are, very awful Tsunami's situation. Nasty. Oh yeah, you just can't nasty. get away from that. It just leveled everything. You ever see the videos of some of those tsunamis? I think that one that hit like one of those um, beach towns. And mm-hmm. People are just like, oh, look at the waves coming, and all of a sudden they're like Uh-oh. holding on for dear life. Yeah. And basically, what it's the ocean and coming in. I mean, it is the ocean coming in on you? But it doesn't stop. Right. It doesn't stop. It's not like a wave. It just comes in and says, you know, I'm going to occupy your land now. And people don't understand the gravity of it. And you see all these little tiny people like that big from a video <laughs> far, far away just getting scooped up in entire buildings and cars and all this kind of it stuff. It starts off pretty, pretty, you know, you see the water kind of coming through and it's like, oh, okay, you could probably get away from that. But it doesn't stop. It just keeps going up and up and up. They had a, a video of one guy who was on the roof of a house. And you could see they basically the, the ground liquefied. So all the buildings did this. And then they started sliding. Oh, my gosh. It was, I couldn't believe yeah, what I was un- watching. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I think the one of the most uh, saddening portions of a video I've ever seen is you see this couple, they're obviously on vacation and they're whole, they're all sitting out on some patio eating lunch and this is uh, not the Japanese one, it was um, it was one prior to that um, anyway, they're, so, they're, so they're eating obviously or whatever and you can see that they must have been in their 60s or 70s and they're holding hands and all of a sudden the water you know, kind of comes up onto the patio and they're holding on to each other and it's too too powerful, and they they both unlock and just get swept away. No, that's sad. So sad. No, uh-huh. oh, <laughs> Did you know that Indonesia? Look this up for me if you could. I believe that Indonesia, just as a sidebar, and this is not a political statement, is the largest in concentrated Muslim country in the world. I did not know that. That would explain all the mosques I saw in the pictures that were just completely... It's either per capita or in total, actually. Uh, not a lot of, you know, it's not to suggest a lot of violence comes out of there or anything like that. No. It's much, no. More, it's much more like Turkey, um, you know, where it's more democratic in nature, I believe. But They're uh, a little more chill over there? Yeah, you're correct. What's, that, what's, this, what's the stats on that? Um, largest Muslim population. Um, it's home to 12.7% of the world's Muslims. Wow. Which is how many does it say? It doesn't say, but it's followed by Pakistan and then India. India has the second largest population. Third. Third, third largest population. Third. Mm-hmm. Indonesia being number one. Who was uh, Pakistan number two? Mm-hmm. India, mix, uh, they have a good mix of Hindu and um, Muslims. There's a lot of Muslims in Israel. Did you know that? I did. Did you know that? I think I, I knew there was a smattering of them. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of Jewish people in Syria. Hmm. Now, that's interesting. That kind of dovetails with another story I saw today. Um, Iran launched a missile over into Syria 
And it said death to America on it, death to Israel, and they launched it over from Iran into Syria. Oh, they're shooting at the wrong place, idiots. I was going, why would they launch it? I mean, I read the headline. I was like, why are they launching it to Syria? What, like a test ground? I don't know. Are they like bad neighbors or something? Their dog's pooping on their lawn or something? <laughs> oh, they're very much in uh, in bed with each other, in fact. I would have thought. Syria, around in Syria. Yeah, well, I thought at they least, were all at least, at least... The, the Iranian uh, administration and the formal um, Syrian administration with um, um, Assad are in, are in cahoots. Ah, okay. Yeah, they're, they're, I would have assumed they're, that. They're yeah. together. But Syria's <clears throat> made up of a, a large faction of uh, other religions as well, including hmm. Jewish people. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Quite a diverse. Learn something new every day. Yeah, it's quite a diverse uh, population over there. All right. Syria is actually a pretty cool country if they would just stop it. Good people. Mm -hmm. Syria? Yeah. Hmm. I think, in fact, I'll go as far as to say that um, controversial or not, but do, do, your, uh, do your homework before you blast me. The majority of the Middle East has I mean, just great people. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not it's not the people that really is the issue. It's the governments and the totalitarianism and the you know the hierarchies and the princes and all that crap. That's that's the problem. Sure, it's not yeah. the people. Great food, great people. I was just gonna say, great food. Too. Excellent food, <laughs> great people, and uh, it's unfortunate that they're viewed. You know that they're viewed as. Everybody's viewed as a terrorist if you're from over there. Yeah, that's kind I of. I mean, a... you say a country, and people the, the 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 simplified way of looking at it is that okay, you're from Syria, so you must be a terrorist. Well, obviously, ninety nine point nine nine nine. It's no different than here. You know, you got wacky people running around the U.S. too, all kinds of cults and weird <laughs> stuff, and people doing podcasts, and people doing podcasts and talking smack all the time. <laughs> It's really no different. It's just that they get a, a few bad seeds over there, or maybe a couple more than that, and it makes everybody look bad. But it's that's really not the case. I'm not defending, you know, terrorists or Saudi Arabia or what. their po their policies in many cases create these scenarios. Oh yeah, don't misunderstand, you know, of hatefulness and all that. But um, it's global politics at work, you know. I, mean, I think the, I think if you were to poll. Somehow, somehow, objectively, which is next to impossible in these countries. It's like polling Russia to see if they like Vladimir Putin, right? A hundred percent. Yes, yes, uh, I do. A hundred percent. I love Mr. Putin. A hundred percent, you know, a hundred percent likability, yeah. Um, Saddam Hussein wasn't a bad guy, just saying. I liked him very much. <laughs> but now that he's dead, I hate him. <laughs> Yeah, they hung that guy out, didn't they? Woo. Yeah, the Qaddafi didn't fare out too well either. Well, both of these are on video, by the way. Yeah, I, th I don't think I saw the Saddam one, but he, he got the noose, right? He got the noose, and I, I'm, I'm sure it was pretty staged, meaning um, it, 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 they staged the whole thing, but the, the video of it is is very choppy. I think it was done that way on purpose. Look, sure. look, look, the U.S. isn't stupid. Intelligence community isn't stupid. I think they did it that way to make it appear as though the Muslim community had been the ones actually videoing it, which may may or may not be true. Oh, but interesting. Okay. You, you see him get hung. Right. They say something to him, and he's, you know... And he, he says, let's get on with it. He says, let's get on with it. And they do it, and he drops, and the whole video is kind of choppy and all this stuff. And that was prior, I want to say, oh, no, that was after they had killed his sons, right? Yeah, his sons. I, I watched those well, videos. They, they, they put that on the national news or blown their faces off. Oh, right? man, they had, they had tanks sitting outside that little palace. And it was like, I don't know, I think I would have just come out and said, yeah, okay, whatever, you know. But I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, well, they, they got they got smacked, and then the Gaddafi thing is on is on tape as well. Oh, he just they that gave, that is horrible. They gave him a beating. Woo! In the back of a Toyota pickup truck. Yeah, in a ditch on the side of the road. I mean, he was getting it for 
20 minutes or so, yeah. Yeah, they were, uh, pr- well, that's what's on video. I think they gave it to him. They beat him down silly. And he was asking for forgiveness and the whole time. But uh, he was a little dude, right? He wasn't able to. No, he wasn't a big dude. He, no, just, he was a little dude. And they he was smacked, just mean. They just smacked him around for a good, at least 20 minutes. And they were probing him, prodding him into the ass. And, you know, basically payback for everything you did to us for the last 20 years. Right. Um, I don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Uh, 30 years. <laughs> well, no, look, I think we talked about this before. Dictators never, at the end of the day, it may take a long time, unfortunately. They don't, you're not going to, it's not going to fare well. We talk, I think we talked about this a oh, little yeah. bit when we were talking about North Korea. When they've actually been able to hold on for now what's three generations. It was the grandfather, then the father, now the son. Yep. But eventually it's going to fall apart. And that, it's just a matter of time. Oh, yeah? It's just a matter of time. Dictators, fascists, the, and communists, they tend to not last too long. It's not going to well, The whole Stalin thing was kind of weird because we're in bed with him, but we're not. And he's a brutal, brutal guy. And uh, But yet we're still in bed with him because we needed to, we needed to you know, the, the, the Germans were going after the Soviets concurrently and decimating them, really. Right. We just had a common enemy. Right. Essentially, is what that came down to. Oh, when, you six, when you see the pictures of Roosevelt and um, uh, uh, Churchill, Churchill and Stalin together, that's kind of weird, it, isn't it's it? A, well, it's a weird picture because he, they, they became our they were our enemy at the time, and they were certainly our enemy after, thereafter the Cold War because the Russians tried to take over a lot of. Uh, territory in that area. Oh yeah, they did po- post-war successfully in some cases. Um, you know, and that's what created ostensibly the Soviet Union um, until it until it wasn't anymore. Interesting thing I picked up on TV the other day. I was watching uh, what is it? The old. It used to be called the Military Channel. Now it's called AIF or something like that. Armed Forces, something mm-hmm. or other. Mm-hmm. And they had a a story on there about. Um, uh, air, air, air power, and basically, uh, the Russians were really at a loss at the end of the World War II for jet engines. They, we were developing it. We got the German scientists, and Britain was doing pretty well. We were sharing our intel with Britain and all that. Turns out, Britain was the one that gave the Russians their jet engine. They gave them twenty. Rolls Royce jet engines, which they immediately took, reverse engineered, and then they built the MIG on top of it. This is the po- post World War II. Yeah, post World War II. I, I, I don't know if I, you know, look, I mean, U.S. politics too. We, oh, yeah. We give God knows how many things. That, let's go back to the Iraq Iran War, for example. Okay. All right. The original, or I'm talking about the 80 to 88 war mm-hmm. between Iraq and Iran. We were supplying the Iraqis with wep- weapons. People, I don't know if people realize that. Oh, yeah. We, we sided with the Iraqis because they were the worst of two, better of two evils, if you will. Mm-hmm. And we supplied them with much of their firepower. They had like the fifth largest army in the world, or maybe it was the fifth yeah. largest air force, maybe. But I, I'm thinking it was like their total army. They were like f- number five. Yeah, that was an eight-year war. Pretty yeah. much ended in a stalemate, right? But uh, we, the, the, we we supplied much of the of the military supply to the Iraqis during that time. Hmm. Think about the years eighty to eighty eight. What was going on in seventy nine and eighty? Carter, Reagan administration, mm-hmm. and then Iraq and Iran were getting into it at the same time. Oh yeah, well so, yeah, so we, we had so to so prop we up back, Iraq. We, back, we propped up Iraq, right? Which is how they ended up with a fair size army, and then we left. And Hussein was in charge. Was that how they ended up with chemical weapons too? I'm, I'm, I wonder about that because I remember there was chemical weapons being thrown back and forth between Iraq and Iran at the time at when the, they were fighting. At, at the time, I think that there were, I can't say statistically how many they ended up with. Um, obviously, there's going to be a dissent from a lot to say at the end of the second Iraq war, we ended up not finding any chemical weapons. Um uh, uh, the media would say, right, and what's published is that we didn't, right. Um, 
what if they disposed of them, if they never had them, had they gotten rid of them, it didn't make a difference. The guy, him and his sons were absolute dictators. Oh yeah. And um, if you were against any of anything that they did, they they just take oh, you out turn to, it on. They take you out to a soccer field and hang you in groups. Right? They had no problems with that at all. No. What about trade? How's things going in the trade world? I heard uh, there's some some new NAFTA agreement being floated out there. It's called the USMCA. I just picked up a little bit on it, on that today, and yeah. I didn't read into it, but basically it's an agreement between the U.S., Mexico, and they just threw in some components to uh, get Canada into it. I don't. I don't know. I know that he wants to get. I know that Trump wants to get rid of the NAFTA agreement, saying it's not a favorable. It's favor most favorable to Mexico. Um, and that he, he wants to get rid of it, reconstruct it as a different type of agreement. I don't think he's about getting rid of a trade agreement entirely. Right. He's about having one that's more balanced. Let's say. Right. Because um, Mexico benefits quite a bit from that particular agreement. Um, I haven't heard too much more about it, other than. Uh, I don't know if this is why Ford was having. I think Ford was actually complaining this week, maybe rightfully so. Um, but I think that had to do with metals and steel and the Chinese tariffs, not not the potential new NAFTA agreement. Really? Okay. It could have been because I know they build a lot of their cars um, in Mexico, yeah, and, and Canada. I, I, believe, I believe that's the case. Well, it makes sense. I mean, we gotta we gotta work with people, but we can't be giving away the farm. And I think that's what that's what NAFTA did. And and as many people as you know, as much as they they sold it as a good thing for the American worker, I it wasn't. And I don't know. It just it just seemed like we our our standard of living went down as more and more NAFTA you know got implemented and. You watch the companies walking out, you know, heading, heading across the border. Yeah, they have. I got to tell you, though, Mexico's got a real big problem right now with all the cartel, with the cartels, and oh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's been going on for quite some time. It's been building and building and building. And they, Every day you're hearing about, you know, mass killings, uh, you know, mass it. graves, find, find 20, 30 people dumped in a ditch somewhere. I, thought, I think if you look on the Department of State, they'll tell you. I think they're on the list of do, do not go there. Not even to the border towns um, where Americans tend to head over the border for some vacation. I think Swinging over to Tijuana? Yeah, I think the, I think the uh, recommendation is don't do that. You don't may, even you, go to you, Cancun? You, you may not. Cancun, I think, was on the list. You may not come back. Really? Yeah. Cancun's always been pretty safe, too. At I least think, I think they're on the Department they of State. Al- they always say that. Uh, in the last couple of years. Don't, y- no, don't they, they, they kind of upped the ante recently. Yeah. I read another article a few weeks ago where they kind of, I don't know if they increased it from yellow to orange to red, but... Mm. Which, by the way, let's go back to the, let me talk about that for a second. We had this, we had this terrorist, you know, green, yellow, orange, red system. Mm-hmm. I think they've since changed it. I don't think. I any, think they they got rid of it a couple of years back. I, you know why? They said it was too complex. People couldn't understand it, and I'm thinking to myself. What the fuck is so hard to understand about green, yellow, orange, and red? Right. And they're like, people don't get it. And I'm like, huh? I don't think the thing ever green moved means from okay. yellow, though. It, it was always well, a I, yellow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was always a yellow because there's, they're not going to put it at green. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's cool <laughs> go all the time. <laughs> I think occasionally they'd go from yellow to orange. It might do that, yep. But I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. So they come up with the, uh, uh, there is, uh, there's, pro- I think there's a new system now, hmm. but nobody knows about it because nobody, you know, we're, we're not only becoming immune to all this, but it's not that complicated. It's just like the stoplights, mm-hmm. green means okay, yellow means proceed with caution, red means stop. All right. Why, why, why that system didn't work? Maybe because they kept it at yellow all the time and everybody's on caution. Maybe they should have had a uh, Dijon yellow. I don't know. Fuchsia? I, 
I, I just I, I don't, don't understand. add to it. I don't no understand way. why it's so complicated. <laughs> we can handle it in our daily lives. Red, green, yellow. You know. Well, some we, of we, us. No, we do it. We, we do it right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> some of us. Wait a second. Then you're blinking yellow. What does that mean? No. Stop. Curveball. Go. Stop. Go. No, that's a flashing <laughs> red. Never mind. Stop. Go. Stop. Oh, you oh, do have, you, do? No, well, you got flashing reds. You got flashing yellows. We should have flashing greens too. Like everything's cool, but maybe not. Cool. We think so. Mm, proceed, but you know we're not responsible. <laughs> <laughs> we're not liable for anything that happens. You if it turns green, I don't. I don't get it. Now they have a system that nobody even knows about because you know nobody cares. Nobody cares. I think it's like the lightning strike thing at this point. Like the the, the likelihood of it happening to me is very unlikely. Mm. We talked about this a few podcasts ago, too. You know, the markets aren't as susceptible as they used to be. Look at the Boston bombing. Right. What happened to the markets? Nothing. Didn't even blink. Didn't blink on that one. Not that that's two towers in the Pentagon and Pennsylvania. That's yeah, much more. But, uh, you know. You know, we're coming up on the anniversary of the Mandalay Bay shooting. Are we? Wow. We are. Has it been a year already? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Time flies when you get old, lady. Hey, I'm not old. Hey, hey, hey. what? What? Is <laughs> we're going to Mandalay Bay. <laughs> cool. And can bring cool. on the hookers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just kidding. JK, JK, JK. So yeah, we're coming up on that. And it, I, I lose. To be honest with you, I'm losing track. You know, we have like a mass shooting every quarter. Yeah. yeah you know. I need some more coffee. All I'm right. I'm exhausted today. Wait, uh, you got Starbucks or what do you got? Some yeah. dark roast? Uh, actually, uh, I, I don't do caffeine. Light roast? I do decaf. Decaf? But it, it's still got a little bit of it. I don't know. Maybe it's psychological. Right. This coffee says time to get up. I used to make when I when I used to make the decaf coffee. I used to put regular coffee in it. It was always fun. Watch the guys that don't want to drink decaf get some de- get some calf in their morning. Oh my gosh! Well, I, I, I would have appreciate I would appreciated that. <laughs> yeah. This was many years ago You're when I was evil. a sco- I was a bit of a scoundrel. Yes. Nice. Well, there was guys that worked at the plant that just didn't ever move. You know, oh, okay. and it was like they were working on my machine and. Hey, we got we got stuff to do. Yeah, get moving. You know, so I'll occasionally I would just drop a little calf in there, and hey, they're kind of moving this morning. I like that. <laughs> All right. I knew a lady a couple of years ago that um, she was probably in her late forties, mid fifties. She drink um, those twenty four hour energy things. What's oh, called? those things are evil. But she drink like I'm telling you. Like eight, ten of these things what? just during work. Plus coffee. Plus she was a smoker. Her heart should have exploded. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I'd ask her. I was like, do you feel okay? And she'd walk around like, I mean, my eyes <laughs> wide open. Ready, go. Let's go. She was, she was Everybody? an absolute maniac. <laughs> absolute maniac. But here, take one of my Xanax. Just, just chill. <laughs> yeah. Or Here's a, five. Or a, bo- or a bottle. <laughs> Take a nap. Here's a pillow. Oh, my gosh. Calm down, lady. You're not going to make it long going like that. No, hell no. Mandalay Bay. Look, so I, I've i lost track of how many mass shootings there are. It's, it's horrible. Terrible. It's horrible. Well, that one was, was pretty significant. And the fact that they still don't have... I was just reading some new articles that came out today. Wall Street Journal, a couple others, CNN, blah, blah, blah. We still don't know what his motivation was. Is he really? Did, is, did he die? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he uh, never, killed gonna, himself. You're never gonna know. Eh, I think he killed himself. He killed yeah. himself. Yeah, I think yeah. it was. I think we could say that. But I think but, the thing is, is that there was a, there was a certain number of people. I mean, I think we were talking. I think it was between seventy five and ninety people that mm-hmm. were killed. Something Jeez. like that. Mm-hmm. The guy dropped eleven hundred rounds off that hotel into a concert. Eleven hundred oh, oh, rounds. You're, you're talking about the one that had uh, country singer. Uh, that was playing at the time. Uh, Keith Urban. Urban? No, it wasn't Keith Urban. It was. Um, no? No. 
it was uh is that that's what you're talking yeah about. yeah that's the one that's yeah. the one you're talking he's sitting about. up in the hotel room in like a big suite up on the 32nd floor or something and he just started raining down fire on all, on all those folks in the oh, yeah, in the concert right. and yeah. it was a country concert yeah so what's his face was playing the guy who did that uh duet with uh brian adams i, I didn't actually say that out loud did i i don't know what you're talking about I, I'm a, I'm out of I'm a, believe it or not even with the hat I'm not a country follower so I, don't, right. I, I don't know it wasn't Keith Urban though no. okay um, some other guy yeah and he can't, I, I'm surprised that was a year ago wow and they still don't have anything they still I don't know what he did he was a good guy oh aren't they all hmm. aren't they all good guys I, when, when have you gone next door and somebody said you know I knew this was coming out of that guy. He's a maniac. I think that happens. The guy quite, was quite a nutcase. Yeah. Uh, how and often? So oh, the one down in Florida was the school that yeah. school shooting. Oh yeah. They were like he he had an encounter with the with the the local police like thirty two yeah. different times. The FBI had been notified three times. They didn't do there anything. There wasn't anything done. Do you about know what the guy. problem is? Is that until somebody actually? All right. So then you get into the topic of. Um, Cr- uh, thought crimes. What, there is such a thing called thought crimes. Mm-hmm. Sure. And you could be, well, the, the idea is that people have been prosecuted and put away on thought crimes, mm-hmm. meaning you didn't actually do anything, but you thought about doing it. Now, this this went back to uh, that grumpy old men's story. Radio Lab. That was on Radio Lab, which is an excellent story where the FBI was investigating. I'll try to shorten it here. They're investigating these, uh, this one old guy in particular who had corralled in maybe four or five of his friends. One of happens, one of which happened to be an FBI agent. Hmm. Um, he wanted to, if I'm not mistaken, um, disperse. Um, Is it cyanide? Cyanide yeah. or something, to, something yeah. to that effect where you needed very little of it. So he had actually tried to purchase all this and. They uh, they pulled up on them in a parking lot hmm. and arrested them all. And they all, the bunch of old guys in their eighties, seventies, <clears throat> and eighties. They all peed their pants. <laughs> now they didn't actually do anything. If you're attempting and organizing, I, I'm not disputing that. They caught another guy in New York trying to do that, where they called. He called the phone number. That would have set off a bomb if it had been the right number. Was that the guy that had the fireworks? No, he oh, had okay. a, he had an actual like van bomb. One yeah, of these the things. FBI had set him up. They yeah. set him up, and what happened was is that he uh, they said, "All right, man, make the call." And he made the mm-hmm. call, and they made a joke out of it because the phone number that he called was actually to the FBI. Oh no! But since he had dialed the number and hit the sun button, the in, there was intent, right? Right. Yeah. Now he didn't actually commit the crime because it didn't go through. Yeah, but he thought he was. He thought he was. I think the the, the grumpy old men never even got hold so, of cyanide. So no, let me correct you because I'm looking at it right now. It's called the grumpy old terrorist. Grumpy old terrorist. On, they, it's on Radio Lab. It's they, a really good story. <laughs> they got caught trying to buy explosives. To blow up a federal building. Okay, but during the course of the story, hey, goddamn government! <laughs> can't get no, my, that, that, ooh, that, can't that, get my that, mail on time. That's how they were talking, because <laughs> the un, the undercover it. agent had them on tape. Oh, but I think he was talking about multiple methods. One of which mm-hmm. was if we could get hold of some cyanide or something to yeah, that effect. Yeah, ultimately they got caught they got trying caught. to buy explosives. This guy, I mean, this was in Georgia? Was yes. it Georgia? Yeah, correct. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have a good memory. <laughs> when did that I'm happen? Taking my fish That's oil. That's kind of interesting. Uh, 14. 14. Anyway, it's a Radio Lab episode. Okay. Really well done called Grumpy. What's it called? Grumpy or Grumpy Old, old Terrace? Terrace. Does it have Walter Matho and uh, Jack Lemon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of our favorites around couple here, of right? Our uh, let's see what else we got going. Um, trade tariffs, uh, terrorism. 
Oh, t- speaking of terrorism, I don't know how I'm going to do this one. A skull-shaped asteroid is headed towards the Earth. Mm. How large is that? Really? That's cool. It's supposedly a dead planet. It's going to swing on by us. Get this. Wait for it. How close? On Halloween. <gasps> a skull-shaped asteroid slinging past us at a couple million miles an hour, looking like a s- flaming skull going by us. Now, how cool is that? That's a media making that shit up. So, <laughs> no, I mean, how big, I didn't say how big it is. Or I didn't catch the size, but I did see the pictures of it, and it kind of does. It looks like the top portion of a skull kind of going sideways through space. I'll we'll have to take a look at that. It's pretty cool. How well, close it, is it coming? Do we know? I didn't catch cl- it. Cl- uh, close, close and, you know, uh, yeah. astrophysicists. Sure. It is like 230 million miles yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. It's it's not bearing down on us. So don't anybody go out panicking like War of the Worlds out there. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. We're um, not preparing. I'll tell you what. I, we, we, this, this happened a few years ago. And we looked up in the night sky, just, you know, gazing as bored people do. And um, saw what? Like. Probably about a dozen satellites go by mm-hmm. within about a ten minute period. Were they satellites or were they asteroids or uh, meteors? No, they were satellites. Yeah, they were well, moving. There's a cluster slowly. of. M- you, you, know, you, you rarely, if ever, see them. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a meteor comes in at a certain angle and kind of phases out as it hits the hits the atmosphere and you know burns out. And sure, these were actually and they. You know, at first I said to I said to her, I said to these that, that cannot be airplanes. It's way too high. Right. Way too high. No blinking, no nothing. That's not thirty thousand feet. These things are a hundred thousand feet plus. One goes by, another goes by, another goes by, another goes by. And you just watch them like twisting around. Mm-hmm. I said, God, those are satellites, aren't they? They have to be. They have to be. That was kind of bizarre. Oh yeah. Yeah, I know that they're, don't don't misunderstand. I know that there's thousands out there, but to see them in such to a, see so many of to them see at so once. many in a pattern, yeah, you know, and they were in a consistent pattern. They weren't moving quick. Well, they're probably moving it, you know, very very quickly. They're but slinging along since they're up there at a hundred thousand, uh, you know, hundred thousand plus feet. They look like they're kind of poking along. Right, that's pretty cool, huh? The best way to see them, I think, I found when I was up north, you know, away from those city lights, is you don't look directly where you think it's going to be, mm-hmm. and you can actually see them better, kind of mm-hmm. trucking along. You kind of look past them mm-hmm. or above them. I, I don't know, you know, wherever your line of sight is, and you can just kind of see them real faint, and they move about that quick. But that is trucking when they're moving up there. Yeah, now. they're moving at a pretty good speed. I, I can't, I don't recall the speed of a, a satellite. And it depends on how many feet it's up, of course, and um, what orbit it's in and all that kind of stuff. But but they're, they're up there, and there are thousands up there, of course. But It's getting crowded up there with all the stuff we're flinging up into space. Yeah, you know, always flinging something up in this place. Hey, maybe there's a place for us to do that. Maybe we could be like the garbage collectors, space garbage collectors. You know, I, I, the kid has a noble cause. The kid who put out that, um, you know, his vacuum cleaner for the ocean. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They, they actually did start that work uh, last week. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it no, is. Uh, yeah, we just it's went from sign. space to ocean. So uh, No, I mean, yeah. the kid, he put a vacuum cleaner out there. It's a beta yeah. product, but it's it's actually operating right last, now. I last th- week. It started last right? week. Last yeah, week they got started. these big lines and everything, and they're just kind of like, just yeah, and, kudos, and, kudos, awesome. and kudos to him for giving it a shot. You know, I I was disappointed that some people were critical of it. Um, some guy, I don't, I don't know, some some editorial armchair dickhead, who's like he, he's right, but it's like just shut your mouth if you're not going to do anything about it. He basically said, "Ah, that's all good and all, but until you get to the root cause about dumping things into the ocean, it's kind of pointless." Well, I, I don't. I don't. No, no I said no, no, absolutely. You got to start somewhere. You got to huh? start somewhere and let the kid go out there. And he at least he's doing. Like, you're sitting here talking about, you know, what I it's, go fix it then. Yeah. You know, the best way to fix the problem, obviously, is to have international world policies where you, there's no more dumping into the ocean and right. stop those tsunamis, which keep blowing a bunch of garbage into the ocean yeah. too. You know, yeah. yeah stop can those. Somebody get on that. Yeah. Somebody get on stopping <laughs> tsunamis, right? 
uh, at least the kid's trying. I'll give it. I'll give that to him. Right? Yeah. No, so. they're working on it. And that that was actually kind of like a bright moment. I kind of went, cool. Well, I think every, I, I think everybody's in agreement that you know, this, this is where politics is not necessarily as binary as it seems. I think there's certain people that want all the same thing. It's a matter of how you go about doing it sometimes. But as an example, all of us read about all this garbage uh, in the in the Pacific, right? And uh, nobody wants it there. No. Right? Nobody wants it there. It's not a politics thing. Um, I, I'm glad he's out there trying to do something about it. Yeah. Like good for him. And he's got some good sponsorship. He's got some people that are interested in his idea. Why not? Roll it. Roll with it. Yeah, I mean, it needs to be cleaned up in one way or another. It's not even just the garbage in the ocean. Like, oh, we have garbage in the ocean. The plastics and the, the way that the, the breakdown works and all that kind of stuff is just poisoning the shit out of the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, but talk about destroying your own planet. It's our ecosystem. Yeah. yeah. You need to keep it sustainable. And if there's a way to uh, these big, I think there are four in total, four or five garbage dumps, one of which is larger than the rest. And, um, yeah, because they basically get caught up in the swirl, right? So everything kind of collects into these areas. So at least he's out there trying to do something about mm -hmm. it. You know, with very the, cool. With not not too much money either, comparatively. Well, they were saying the only way it's going to be cleaned up is by private sponsorship. The governments aren't going to do anything. Well, that's a bunch of bullshit. Right. They really should contribute because they're, they're the ones kind of dumping it in there. Yeah, yeah they make the Absolutely. regulations. And the laws. regulations about mm -hmm. per permitting ships to dump all their crap in there in the rivers to to mm -hmm. not catch it. I'm, I'm not an eco, you know, like fucking fanatic or anything, but you know, who wants a garbage dump in the in the ocean? You know, and who wants a hole in the ozone? Nobody. Close that thing up. I know how we could do it. I know we could close the ozone. If you believe in that sort of thing. <laughs> I, I think I think that there's a hole there. I'm pretty sure of it. Are you sure? Have you seen it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a hole. Mm. Um, let's talk about that when we get back. Mm. Take a quick break. Cool. Sorry, guys.
That's pretty good. <laughs> uh, sip. Etiquette, please. All righty. Should I put this in the middle Rrr. just in case? What's that? Rrr. Wrap it up. Bad influence. Burp. Are we on? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Well, I don't have to be edited Good out. Good <laughs> Here, wait, uh, note to Kirsten, edit out the last <laughs> minute. Awesome. All I was saying was that I think it's fair to say that there is probably, again, I always have to say take politics out. There's probably a hole in the ozone. <laughs> I think there is. Okay. I mean, I think it's... Global warming, though. I'm not talking about global warming <laughs> and whether that's an organic and natural event or created by man. I'm talking about a hole, right, and emissions creating that hole, period. And going back to the the, um, the ocean issue. Mm. Billy Ocean? Yeah, you know, hey, Billy Ocean. Good times <laughs> in the 80s. Who? Billy Ocean. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. She's 57 years old. She knows. Um, so if you look into what is called bioplastics, essentially. Bioplastics? Or, let's call them organic plastics. They, ex okay. they exist, and there's a lot of research going on about it. So you have your synthetic plastics, which is... Which you see at the grocery store and say, you know, bag it, right? The stuff your packaging comes in, it's all, the majority of which is synthetic plastic. Oil based. Yeah. And, and its breakdown structure takes forever. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, that that's where that pollution comes from. And it breaks down this very, very infinitesimal molecules. Fish get into it, it gets into their food, and ultimately it gets into your food, and ultimately you're eating your own plastic. Um, but there's an alternative to that. The problem with the, the alternative is this is may, it has proven that it may not be, it could be equally as bad. So think about it this way. If you were to create an organic plastic, and let's say you do it out of... Um, Corn, sugar, mm -hmm. can be created into plastic. You always have to look at the root, right? Mm -hmm. So creating the corn, growing the corn. Corn oil. It takes water to do that. It takes energy to do that. It takes resources to do that. It takes pesticides to do that, and so on and so forth. I'll give you those four as an example. Sure. So you end up with an organic plastic, but how organic is it really, right? Because of all the support work that no, it, got it there. Eco-friendly, right? Mean, how eco-friendly it is. Well, uh, well, than well because it's 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 fair, fair enough. Yeah. Eco-friendly. So yeah. its breakdown structure is much 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 faster, but potentially equally as damaging to the underwater ecosystem mm -hmm. as it is with synthetic plastics uh, because the fish take in the pesticides and they take in, mm -hmm. and of course all the resources you did to create the corn, to grow the corn. Mm -hmm. Corn's a, 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 one example of something you can create plastic out of mm -hmm. and sugars. Um, there's no easy answer right yet. That's no. something that needs to be fixed though. Well, we need plastics to keep our food fresh, right? In some ways. Well, there the uh, there there are studies that show that other eco-friendly plastics actually work much better than synthetic plastics in keeping things fresh. Really? Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, a lot some of it comes from today's version. Synthetic comes from petroleum, and then you start throwing in the politics. Because oh, yeah. petroleum is used in order to buy product, byproducts in order to create plastics. And now you're messing with you know, the petroleum infrastructure. Right. Which is not going to go away anytime soon. Mm -hmm. 
well, does that transfer to the concept of electric cars, right? Everybody says, okay, well, we're going to have electric cars, and then we're going to have less fuel emissions. Okay, well, wait a minute. All right, <clears throat> so we have to have more power plants. Right, so walk through the whole process of what you think it might be. Okay, so we take fossil fuels, and we just say, all right, no more cars. Everybody's running on battery. Correct. Number one. We're already running into a battery shortage, right, because of the, the things that are needed, which is, what, lithium, NICAD, all those different rare the elements, types, right? right? So then you've got the toxicity of that, which becomes an issue. Then you have to somehow and dis- come up and with disposal, more power. And disposal of batteries. Disposal, recycling, with, with whatever that is, yeah. Right. If maybe, maybe you can have a, a 100% recyclable lithium bi- battery. But ultimately, your electric energy isn't going to be in your, your cost per uh, gallon. Remember, they were going into the, the ethanol, right? Well, then they found that the ethanol... Which was hot in about, what, seven, eight years ago. And they still have signs up for it, right? And you can still get ethanol in places. And it's cheaper, right? But you burn more of it to get the same mileage mm-hmm. that you would with gasoline. There's, there's a, a fading economies of scale there, right? So let's go back to ethanol. Ethanol is created also from corn. Right. Right. And the process to even grow the corn with the water, the farming, the pesticides, so on and so forth. If you do the cost of goods. You've poisoned yourself further up the chain. Earlier in the chain. Earlier in the chain, right. yeah. Right. You did a lot of damage in order to create that. That reminds me a little bit of Bitcoin. Meaning the electricity that you're spending in order to uh, acquire the currency is not worth the currency itself. Right. Right. Which, so th- there is no um, – I know a lot of institutions, including Stanford, are looking into alternatives. But there, there's, obviously there's no answer to it just yet because right. otherwise we'd be doing it. The, 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 the point being is that I think that there is a commonality between Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, uh, Independents, whatever, of things that we all agree that we'd, we'd be better off with. Mm-hmm. A smaller hole in the ozone would be, I don't think anybody's going to dispute if they agree. I think if you were to do a poll and ask just a simple question, do you believe that there is an ozone hole? Forget about how it got there. <laughs> All right. Forget about whether it creates global warming. Most people are going to say yes. Sure. Fair enough. Because science, science can take a thermal picture of that, and you can see the hole. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. It's, it gets bigger. It gets smaller. How it got there. Remains it, to be seen. Remains to be seen. Then you get into all the glacial stuff and all that kind of stuff. Whether those things are happening organically or because of humankind. You know, but I mean, I, th- I think they're common themes. Let's, the, the garbage one is an, uh, an easy one. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants to, to know that, but you, it doesn't stop you going from on your carnival cruise. I'm not blaming carnival. I'm saying, you know, dumping things into the ocean. Well, they've actually taken great pains to recycle and do a lot of eco-friendly things on their ships to maintain and reduce the amount of waste that's going out there. I'm not a spokesman for them, but you actually read up on some of these things, and they actually work really hard at that. If I'm not mistaken, most of it comes from Asia, actually. Sure. It makes its way into the Pacific junkyard. Right. right. So, um, but the, you'd have to have a world international policy and forum in order to fix that. Right. Every, everybody have to be like, yeah. Well, wait a minute. We got people starving over here, so we really can't contribute to you know your, yeah, your yeah, little plastic right, pickup. Your, right, your little plastic pickup right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way to fix it is just to eliminate most people. Hmm. Well, there we go. I'll put that on my political platform. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your 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 sign, your logo will be a big giant asteroid crashing into the earth. Right. In the shape of a skull. <laughs> In the shape of a skull. I was actually reading an article the other day. Uh, Beard. <laughs> sugar skull. Nefarious. Yeah, yeah sugar skull. Uh, I was reading an article the other day um, that had to do with uh, you know the, the, the overall, overall human footprint and how to reduce it. 
they've been really working hard at that already. But well, what are they saying they need to do now? Well, basically, you'd have to castrate everybody. Everybody? Hmm. Well, the men. All the men. Hmm. I mean, just, I mean, it's a natural process to, you know, it's human nature to, to procreate. Right. But, yes. I mean, it's, it's, built, it's, it's built into you to do that. Right, we we think of it as sex and fun and whatever. At the end of the day, there's reasons for it, mm -hmm. right? It's to procreate, to make another one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't make another one. Like like Dan and Natasha would say, look, it's another me. We don't need another you on the planet, you know. <laughs> Especially people I drive by on I seventy five. If we could just eliminate those folks, we'd be all right. Put them on all on a carnival cruise and sink the ship. Hmm. I think hmm. that was Bill Burr's idea. <laughs> hmm. I want to get back to Elon Musk. How's Elon doing? So Did he come down from his buzz yet? So mm, I, I, I think, think so. Th so in fact, he got uh, eliminated as the chairman today oh. of, of Tesla. Snap! Yeah. Um, it, it was on the basis of him having made a statement on Twitter that he would, had the private funding in order to take Tesla private as opposed to on the stock exchange. He may have. Public. He said that he had, I, I, I want to say it was Saudi backing. Mm. The problem in saying that is, is that the markets love to control itself, right? Mm -hmm. And... Um, So they basically said, you need to be, they wanted to oust him as the CEO and chairman of Tesla. Ouch. I can't imagine getting kicked out of your own company that you created. I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be livid. It happens all the time. Okay. Cisco, they did that. Papa, um, jo Papa John's. Papa John's, they did that. I'm not, I'm not vow vouching for the guy. Uh, <clears throat> what's the guy who did the suit thing? Oh, Men's, men's Warehouse. Warehouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He got the boot. Did he? Yeah, he, what was his line back in the day? I guarantee I guarantee. something. I guarantee it. You're gonna look. You're good gonna look good. Like I guarantee that. it. Yeah. I guarantee it. Yep. yep, he, yep. He, he got kicked off his own company by his own chair, by his own board. Papa John got kicked out. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the guy. It's just like sell pizza, dude. Get out of the. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Just sell pizza. You know, well, he, he got himself involved in too many things. Elon's still the CEO. So he stayed the CEO. Okay. And well, he's still I, in. I, I'm going to make a prediction as to what's going to happen. All right. So what they're supposed to do is bring in an independent chairman. Two. two thank two. you thank for clarifying. Wow, it takes two <laughs> people to do two his people. one job. That's that's pretty well, and, and, well, in fact, he said, good luck. You're not I'm Elon Musk, basically. Mm -hmm. Or other people said, I mean, he's essentially the Steve Jobs of Tesla or mm -hmm. innovation or whatever you want to call it. And two people have to to go in there. Uh, I'll go 20 to 1 on a buck here. They'll go private in the next year. And they'll still go private. Yeah. Hmm. He'll manipulate his way out yeah. of it and go part of it. You're gonna. It's just he's just buying time, man. He's, he's gonna force him. it that way. He's gonna force it that yeah. way. Yeah. Oh god. He's Elon Musk for God's sake. I mean, meaning he's gonna get the funding. He's go, gonna go, buy go, back all go his private stock. And go uh, go say. tell everybody to f off. Mm -hmm. Go back on Rogan and smoke some more weed. Now let me tell you something. I don't think they liked it that he did that because that's where this all started. You think it was all about the weed? I think that that's where it started. Hmm. Mm. You know, I mean, he's got a pretty sizable ego. I mean, it, it would be hard to get him into this room, right? I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. mm. The guy yeah. the guy is... Rogan couldn't get him for the longest time. He finally went in there. Interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it took a long time for him to me. I'm a I'm a thinker. I'm up here. You guys are down here. Yeah. No, he's uh Um I don't know how he is in real life. It was an interesting interview. He's he's quietly spoken. 
uh, very driven to achieve his goals. You know what? I read a great meme the other day. I had a picture of the, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, what's the mountain there in India? Um, the one everybody climbs. Sir Edmund Hillary and all those guys. Himalayas. Himalayas, yeah. It says, at the top of that mountain, there is hundreds of bodies of people who are highly driven. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's actually true. I was like, wow, yeah, that's, and that's on the kind way, of a cold and, reality. And on the way up, too. And no pun on the cold reality. Right. Because that's how they die. Oh, yeah. They freeze to death. Oh, yeah. Their feet turn black. They, they just go them. to sleep. They lose their limbs and go night night. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If you got to go, that's the way to go, though. Oh, yeah. Freeze to death. You know why? You don't know what happened. Nope. You just and you wake okay. Up. You're, look, you're looking at me a little bit funny. She's off camera, but let's do the uh, the polar opposite. No pun intended. Would you rather burn to death or freeze to death? Mm. Oh yeah, I'll take free, I'll take freezing because you're just going to go to sleep and never wake up again. Burning to death, you're going to know it. it kind of hurts. Kind of hurts. I don't know how those Buddhists sit there and like just sit there while they burn. You know, the amazing mind control. Amazing mind control. <laughs> you gotta be a badass motherfucker. Yeah. To sit there and burn and not move. Not move. I'd be running around like a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody pee put, on me, please. Put me out. <laughs> even if even after I did it. I, even after I did it, I'd be like what have I done? I've seen some people light themselves on fire and just sit there. What? Yeah. Oh. Yep. Hmm. Lord. Conservative Buddhists have done it many a time. They'll sit there and burn them and burn themselves. <laughs> just a little flame. Are you, a little smoke. Are you putting don't worry yourself out? Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been on fire a couple of times. I don't want to get into how. <laughs> oh no! Do tell. <laughs> Let's no, play, play, <laughs> please play step you, onto my couch. You, you really don't want to. Know. I don't want to know what you're into. <laughs> That's not what I'm into. I, I was li I was lit on fire by somebody else once. Hmm. I guess they just wanted me gone. Actually, they didn't even know me. Um, <laughs> God, I couldn't imagine. And, who. <laughs> uh, and uh, I was wearing wearing something that was extremely flammable. Oh, it was that uh, those. Uh, those uh, uh, MC Hammer pants. Yeah, probably. And, uh, yeah, I still have burn marks on me from that. Ouch. Yeah. Worst know. thing I ever had was somebody threw a candle at me. It was a pretty big candle. As long as it landed in the right spot, Kurt. Hey, Are happy you, birthday. If you're into the wax <laughs> thing, you keep that to yourself. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, it wasn't. No. <laughs> He's like, no. No. No, no. Yeah, no. So I don't even know what you're talking about. Himalaya, yeah, you're gonna. I'd rather. I'd rather freeze to death by far. I mean, yeah. it'd be horrible at first, like because you realize you're just so cold. But let me tell you something. I've been out in like, uh, you know, ten or less than zero weather, and you do kind of just fall asleep, and uh, it, it's not painful. It's just so much is uncomfortable. Oh yeah, and you're, just, you're just gonna die in your sleep. Burning, you'd be running around like a fucking, you know. I'd be running around like a maniac. Put me out. We're the guy at Burning Man last year, not this year, last year. Jumped into the, he jumped into the fire. Really? Yeah. How'd that work out for him? Not too good. Well, hmm. it is called Burning Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, 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 it didn't We've work been out waiting for all yeah. these years right? for, for the one guy to do that. <laughs> we finally got it. Yeah, he he, he ran it. right into the fire. Wow. It's like a huge bonfire. Oh, Remember yeah. that Texas A&M thing that happened? Oh, that was a big deal, yeah. 10, 12 years ago. Because they do big bonfire at Texas A&M every year. and It collapsed. Mm. I don't think while it was on fire. I think it collapsed while they were building it. No, I think it was on fire. Was it? Yeah, it was killed, on fire. Killed, and I killed, think. A, killed a bunch of students. Oh, yeah. Killed a bunch of students. Yeah. Some people, I don't know, just, just not thinking straight. They put all kinds of policies around it afterwards. Like this year, Burning Man, I think they had security and a fence around it. But it, Burning Man is turning into something else 
that it didn't used to be. It was mm-hmm. just it used to be a bunch of hippies out in the desert, you know, running around naked, now, dropping acid or something. Yeah. Now I think it's uh, I've never been to it, so I can't say. But I've heard people who've gone to it, and um, now it's you know, kind of turning into a bit more um, you know, like a retail, like a mall in the desert. Now the last description I heard of Burning Man was it was just a big giant sex orgy. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that's how it started. Yeah, okay. I think it started. I think it's still that way, probably. Just sort of lawlessness for however long, a week or whatever. You know. I guess if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, I haven't ever gone. I'd rather go to the uh, the Harley thing up in South Dakota once a year. Oh, uh, the ride, whatever it's called, um, I Sturgis. Done, Sturgis. I haven't done yeah. that. I haven't done that yet. I'd like know. to do that. That would be fun. Yeah, I've got the right bikes for it and all that. So I do. I think I'll go. She has a Harley. I'm too. Get a Harley. Yeah. Oh, was that the one I saw you riding the other day on the uh, oh, LinkedIn? No. Mm-mm. That's his. That's a chopper. Yeah, yeah. It's a custom bike. Yeah. Where'd you find that baby? That was pretty nice. Yeah. No. It's uh. That's actually made with a um. Whoever cares, out of a Buell engine, not a Harley engine. Really? That's well, kind of cool. Buell is Harley. Right. Now, Eric Buell used to work at Harley. Mm-hmm. Left, created his own thing called Buell, and uh, was uh, very competitive with Harley Davidson. They bought him out. Mm-hmm. And uh, it has a Buell engine, and the whole, the whole bike is custom made. Sure. Yeah. Looks yeah. like the Batmobile. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty slick. That looked as cool as, uh, you know, what those Jesse James bikes that were pretty popular years back. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of a, a little mi- bit it's, of that. it's yeah. kind of a minimalist spike. Yeah. Uh, it's all flat black and um I How many CCs? Uh 1200. Cool. Yeah, I think I'll get you there. I think it's loud. It takes you for a ride. You don't ride that bike. <laughs> it takes you for a ride. That's a nice bike, though. I enjoy that one. You need a sissy bar. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not putting anything extra on that one. With the hangers. No windshields. Yeah. No, 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 no nothing. It makes it so hard to drive, yeah. though, you know. Yeah, but OC, you look cool. little OCC chopper type of thing. Mm. Yeah, I'll get another custom bike at some point. Something a little bit different. But uh, I'm never going to I'm never gonna put a windshield or anything like that on No, 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 no. All right, I'm not going to tell that. Right. No, I like the wind. I like to get hit by the bugs and all that stuff. Boy, do they hurt. Stop. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> I, 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 there. When I was out in uh, Arizona, I used to, uh, that was my form of transportation was a motorcycle because it was cheaper and good gas mileage and whatnot. And uh, Phoenix has, I don't know if people understand this, Phoenix has the worst rain ever. It's a de- rain? It's, it, it's a desert, but yeah. The when most, it rains, it when it rains, it, it rains harder than I've ever seen. And they they actually have the the um, the most interesting thunderstorms you've ever seen. I mean, the most violent rain and thunderstorms. It's like an instant flash flood warning when they the, come in. When they come in, they come in hard. Mm-hmm. And uh, I used to ride my motorcycle on them. There's a couple times I would have a helmet on, man. You, you can't. Feels like you're getting hit by bullets. Oh or, yeah. Or bees. Like you're getting like you're getting stung by bees the entire time. You gotta stop. Find an overpass. Yeah, sit there. And I'd always run into those dust devils too. Just all over the desert. That just you know, to me that just sounds like fun. They could be coming across a fr- you know, you'd see them out in the distance and try to time it. To where you wouldn't run through it, yeah, as it crossed the fr- freeway, and it's just sitting there waiting for you. Yeah, it's kind of wait for, it's <laughs> wait like, for yeah, me. I see him coming. Here's the dangerous Here part. You know what you do when that happens? I shut my eyes and just ride through it. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing else you can do, and you, you, you make it through. My butt cheeks ain't letting go of this seat. Yeah, you're holding on tight, squeezing in, <laughs> squeezing in like you're trying not to fart during sex. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's not something I do. Well, we wouldn't want to. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't want to. Wouldn't want to upset the partner with that going on. 
Yeah, you got to adjust accordingly. <laughs> Is that before or after Taco Bell? <laughs> well, you never have sex Chipotle. after. You never have sex after Chipotle. Oh, it's, it's common. <laughs> That's common. You don't want that. Kind of ruin the moment. You it know? would. Yes. Yeah. Mood killer, right there. <laughs> so yes, I'd be holding you know, onto my motorcycle like I, you know, was having <laughs> sex after Taco Bell. All right. It's good to know. Yeah. What else did TMI. I miss? T M I. T M I. That's not too much information. Everybody deals with the same shit. Heck right? yeah. If you think I'm the only person that deals with non-farting during sex, all right, there's about 7 billion other people on the planet that, that say otherwise. Well, you guys are weird. Well, some people are into it. <laughs> some be- I was just going to say. Well, some people, are, some people are like, hey, yeah, you know? bring it on. Bring it. Br- bring it on. Bring it on. Bring it on. We'll see Brr- <laughs> not me personally. I'm just saying. If that's what you're into, hey, go for it. Different strokes, different folks. Yeah. No pun intended. Continue. Elon Musk, I think he's getting the boot because he's uh, guaranteed he'll go private. Got guaranteed. 20 to 1. Smoking Year, year, year and a half. He's got too much juice. Too much money, too much power, too much brand name. Well, if he's got the Saudis behind him, and if he's got the Saudis behind him, he'll, that he'll, he'll, yeah. I think they're just pissed off because he said that they go private. And well, there, there's a second part to that. There is the economic factor, mm-hmm. meaning if he says that the the, the the stock doesn't do well, and and then therefore the stock exchange itself gets a little turned upside down. So he spoke a little out of turn. Um, announcing such things publicly, sure. Yeah, they be. they have a game that they want to play to maximize their profit. Well, right? of, course, of course. So he should have he should have just waited. But it, it kind of started with the Rogan thing, and I think he started to get more attention. Um, you know, for having s- smoked a little weed on the show, and um, I, I think oh, he's going to be fine one way or the other. His, his name is Elon Musk. For God's sake. Side note. Did you know his mother is a famous supermodel? No. She's Still? In her, yes. She's in her 70s. She's beautiful. Um, she does commercials and print work. She's just gorgeous. Like Tracy Ullman. Sure. Where is he from? I don't know. Elon, look him up. So she's 70. Yeah. And yeah. she's still supermodel. She's still modeling. You, you you've seen her on TV. I think she does like Revlon commercials. Really? Mm-hmm. She's pretty. loaded. Yeah. She's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. Where's she hang? Revlon. I think so. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Seventy years old. You can get her. <laughs> As my mother-in-law said, if I had to do it again, I I. Yeah, she's a funny lady. I, no, actually, I'm not going to repeat what she said, but Say it. never mind. Oh, basically, go do it to an Anna Nicole Smith. He married like a 90 year old, like you know, widowed. Going for the money, one foot in the grave with a big bank account. Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Where's she from? Where, where does Elon okay, Musk even okay. live? Okay, okay. So he has citizenship in South Africa, right? Which is where I think his origin. Canada is. and the U.S. and U.S. Where's he? Where's he born? It can't be here. Nobody names a kid Elon. I bet you. Uh, I bet you was born in South Africa. It's got to be South mm-hmm. Africa. Maybe she dragged him to Canada. Yeah. Yeah, South Africa. So somebody already bought the first ticket to his uh, spaceship Moon uh, Mars rocket. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Some, some Japanese unnamed millionaire, Jap- unnamed billionaire, Japanese billionaire uh, right. already bought the first ticket for it. Bye-bye. What, what what he doesn't you know, what he doesn't realize is he's funding the project. Yeah, you know they haven't built this thing yet. I'm gonna go out and do do the same thing. You know, I'm gonna send somebody to Jupiter. How much is that ticket? Ooh, me, me, me. Uh, seventy billion. Oh, I got no it. Problem. I need no problem. Half down. Some change, right? I need yeah. half, I need half down. Who wants to go? I cut you check. Hey, listen, <laughs> uh, you got to give it to the guy. You know he's not gonna make it. Um. I wouldn't want to be the first beta test out to the Mars on an Elon Musk rocket. Uh, but to Mars? No, but around the moon, I think I could do that one. I could do the moon. Hey, all they've those done, other they, guys they've did done, it, right? they've done, If NASA was involved, they'd do it. 
If it's just uh, Elon Musk's little brother or something like that monitoring my status, forget about it. Next thing you know, you're headed for Pluto. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <Ooh. laughs> That'd be kind of cool way to die, though. Just getting shot out into the universe. I don't know. Was that like freezing to death? Probably would be. Uh, I think, well, I mean, eventually, you just, uh, not just freezing. I mean, it's just freezing. You just uh, run out of oxygen. An, uh, an astronaut could tell you better what would happen. I, I think for the, for the most part, you'd, you'd run out of oxygen, probably fall asleep, freeze to death. And you're, you're moving at, what, 22,000, 30, 40,000 miles an hour. You're hustling. You're hustling. I mean, when you come back, even from the space shuttle, you're hauling ass, right? Oh, yeah. That was I mean, kind of cool when they bring those babies back in. Yeah, you're 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 moving, you're moving. That's a different concept entirely. And you got you got to be up for that ride. I'd do it though. I'd no, do I the moon it. thing. You know, the only thing I, th- I don't think I could do. And I'm being honest. Uh, I probably get the uh, probably get dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> get some vertigo going yeah, there. Vertigo going. <laughs> you know, that'd be cool though. You know, I, this should come up with different ways of uh, getting rid of people. Let me, let me, let me change subjects for a minute. I mean, right. you got two options, but it, it, it's seemingly two options right now. Burn or freeze? Burn, burn or be buried. Well, yeah. I mean, t- two main options. Be cremated or put in the ground. I don't like those options. I mean, you got cryogenics, I know. But and either way, you end up in the ground. Yeah, you end I mean, up in the carbon well, cycle. I mean, th- okay, so what's your, what's your selection right now? Oh, hey, dirt nap. You're gonna take a dirt nap. Yeah, six feet under. Dirt nap. Go back. Go back to the earth. Carbon cycle. I mean, that take forever. Yeah, let's take good. forever because you're in a box and the whole thing. And well, that whole resurrection of the dead thing. I'm hoping I get to see it. So you know. I know, but you're already dirt come nap. back as a zombie. Yeah, decompose and all that bullshit. And they got cremation, which is not very fond either. Here, we're going to burn the hell out of you. Some people, yeah, they think that's cool. I don't know. You know, I don't think it's have their ashes cool. kind of scattered. How many, how many options do you have? I mean, that's basically two options. You could, you can't. Most people can't afford cryogenic. I mean, essentially freezing yourself into a state of whatever, so you could potentially be brought back another day. Uh, I don't. Uh, I think that's just a that's just a money grab scheme too, because I I don't think you can bring somebody back from that. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't think so either. But uh, there, I, there's got to be. I'm gonna come up with a better way to do this. You know, what do you, what do you think? They got two ways of basically people um, being disposed of humans: uh, cremation and burial. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's other options. Mm-hmm. You, but even when if you get shot up in the space, I think you're I think you're uh, cremated first, and your ashes go up in the space. Usually, yeah. W- w- which do you choose? Out of the three. Out of the two. Well, dirt nap, cre- cremation, or dirt, or nap dirt nap or creation uh, or, uh, or be uh, cremation. Okay, so being shot up in space isn't. I heard you could be made into a diamond. Uh, I think I want to be a diamond. No, um, cremation. Uh, don't put me in the. I know, but it is isn't it, it isn't it kind of two like really crappy uh, options. Well, what else do they do with you? Well, um, Wood chipper. That we, we, Ooh, we, that's we, messy. We <laughs> we, 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 <laughs> st- we stuff animals. Why not get you stuffed? Well, I think I would. Ooh, taxidermy. Yeah, taxidermy. Just put me in my favorite recliner. Yeah, <laughs> this Kirk. There he is. <laughs> yeah, but then we gotta hang on he's to you. Look, he's, he's, he's got the, the he's got the remote. Move you if we move. I mean, ah. oh, what's a big deal? You gotta move a couch. You can't move Kirk. Yeah, but then my kids get you, and then the grandkids like. Hey, you pat, you you pat pat grandpa. <laughs> yeah. Doing, 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 jumping up. You, you, you get uh, you know all wrangled up over the ears, and your pants will fall off, and. Oh yeah. Get a little dusty be. there. All right, Jessica, I got a question for you. There is basically yes. two options when you die. All Cre- right. Cre- cremation and bur- burial. Right? Yeah. Cremation, please. Okay. Bugs. I, 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 is that like a preference or only because? Bugs and worms? Yeah, that's basically why. Oh. 
Just burn me. Yeah. <laughs> and spread me. I don't no, know. No, but Sounds super uh, lame and cliche. Bug, but bugs and worms don't get into your casket. I mean. They could, well, I mean, I suppose they could eventually eat the yeah. wire, but they'd have to be pretty good at it because you're bringing yeah. Right, but think about it. Is either also option rotting in a box? Is either option is either option really attractive though? No, you're dead. I don't really care what you do with me after because I'm dead. I'm not in my body anymore. Oh, so. Good point. Okay, so you yeah. got the soulful thing going on. Yeah, that. Well, yeah. It, it depends I on do. your beliefs. It depends on your beliefs, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. It might not even matter, right? You could be that person. Just you're you're gone. Lights out. But still, you're not in your body anymore. No, I'm not. Th- so, uh, in, in so your in your theory, the, the soul, right? So your your cremation, your burial, your cremation. What about you? What are you? Man, I don't live forever. <laughs> I'm, bi- I'm biblical. <laughs> He's already like. I'm God's already, gonna strike 20, you down now. I'm already, years old. I'm already 984. <laughs> I mean, you look great for almost a thousand. I'm not Doesn't even gonna lie. Not, yeah. not, not too bad, Aging great. I just, What's your I, just I, I just don't. I don't know. I mean, I'm not talking about the soul being different from the body and all that kind of stuff. It's just like I don't know. There's something about just chopping your body into like little pieces. Ooh. What? And that's Who's how they deal that? with it. That's how they deal with it down in you know. Actually, the give me a land. Viking funeral. Just uh, throw me on a canoe and burn pirate? me. Pirate, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Do it so you're gone. Viking funeral, just oh. throw me on a canoe and burn me. Yeah, and let like me like pu- pu- float push, up. Push you off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And push then me off. You, and you, sink into the, you sink into the sea. And, yeah. Uh, you become one with the ocean or whatever. One with the plastic garbage dump. Yeah, yeah basically. That's where you'd end up swirling around a fucking, I mean, you know, that's kind of karma because I put a lot of that plastic there from that line. So. Yeah, you'd probably like <laughs> be floating around like a carton of eggs or something, you know. <laughs> Well, there's Jessica. <laughs> you know. Everything comes full circle then because fish were once my food. Now I'm their food. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. What well, was your preference? I, 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 I say Viking you, funeral. You have to pick one. If I had to go with today, I'd say cremation. Right on. You know, I, I don't know. Why? Uh, I don't know. Because of worms? Not because <laughs> I want to be burned to death. <laughs> Oh, I'm already not, dead. Yeah. I, get, I get it. <laughs> not because I want to burn and, a, and put into a vase or something. You see, the fact is nobody's going to keep you over time. Over time, people are going to be like, who, who, who is this? They're going to lose you in between moves. Yeah, you, get, right, you, you end up on somebody's front lawn. Rich is on the mantle. Yeah. <laughs> right, for like the first couple of generations, then the kids are going to be like, well, it's not a gun. Why are we keeping great keeping grandpa? Well, what's this thing of fireplace? dust up here? I'd be yeah. like, just smoke him. I, know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. A bear, a dirt, a dirt, a dirt bear, I don't know. Claustrophobia. Maybe. You're not Maybe, but alive. You're dead. <laughs> well, how do you know? And you're dead. Well, I mean, because you need a heartbeat and blood flow and you don't know that. oxygenation in your blood you to like go good. to all the you, you, you could you could potentially be completely aware when you're done uh, how that would be interesting i'm not saying how because nothing in the world is logical nothing in the universe is logical you could hypothetically aren't logical at you all. could hypothetically be aware and what if you're in there going, oh, my God, I don't want to be in here, but I can't get out because of how my muscles are anymore. Well, in that case, I would much rather have the Viking funeral or cremation. I'm pretty about, sure the Viking funeral is probably What about, shot in, the, what about shot, shot in the space? Uh, or would you rather go in water? Water. Yes. I'm unfamiliar with stay space. Like, I know. Stay on the, you know, stay on the <laughs> earth. in water. Who knows? Some alien would find your dust and then, like, you know, resurrect you. Yeah, I was just going to say start cloning you. you. <laughs> and then uh, invade the earth with a bunch of clones of A bunch you. of little Jessicas. Everyone would be like, oh, little my God, there's more than one. Jessicas Everyone run. <laughs> yeah. Taking over the world and coming down in spaceships. Oh, my God. The irony would be fantastic. <laughs> Uh, I think I think there should be more options, you know, <laughs> that are that well, are financially palatable. What would be an option? Uh, uh, what to do with you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, you could stuff you like a pig, you know. <laughs> I'm sure people do that. You, you could ro- you could roast you. There are some tribes down uh, in the you know you? down in the south. It's so creamy. Pacific. Like have a Jessica roast instead of a pig roast. I don't know, uh, but everyone's gonna eat human you, meat then. Yeah, She's like turning. You on wouldn't the thing. be good eating. <laughs> I, w- I would. I would. <laughs> I want the you wouldn't be either. Fat, fat nut. <laughs> They'd be oh. like, where's the meat at? <laughs> fat nut. I don't want to eat the muscle right now. Thank I'll, take, you. <laughs> I'll take the rump. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's fat. Yeah. Rump, rump, rump roast. Rump I'm roast. well marbled. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw a little hickory on me and some and some uh, uh, cowboy rub, and we're good to go. Barbecue sauce. What is that? A thigh? I'll take the thigh. I'll take Kirk's thigh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Walking around, walking around like the Renaissance festival. Hey, this goes back to that cannibal who ate that guy. Him and the guy, I think it's a book called Cannibal. It was a German guy who put out an ad. This is this is so bizarre. If I were to put this ad out, I get hate not only hate mail, but the guy put out an ad. It's a it's a book called Cannibal. All right. It's a true story. I can't remember the na- guy's name. Blitzen John Schutzen or something, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he puts out an ad in like a Craigslist type thing, right? No, 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 no thing on Craigslist. No bike. For it, it, so he basically said, I think he says in the ad, and, and the ad is actually in the book. It basically says, "I'm looking to um, for somebody who wants to die and to to be cannibalized," and, and he got multiple responses, hmm. and he interviewed of sorts. Multiple hmm. candidates. Of people that wanted him to actually eat them? They wanted to eat themselves, to the victim, if you will, together. Hmm. Multiple people. Um, Maybe they misunderstood the ad. Yeah, well, I'm thinking a couple, a couple <laughs> probably did. They're like, I'm here for the hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here for the barbecue. He's Big like, roast, right? Yeah, you are the barbecue. Um, so... So, so look, can you look up the guy's name? The book is called Cannibal. Who gets the Rocky Mountain oysters? Some, so some oh, guy. Oh God! So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so some some guy actually answers. They go on. I don't want to call it. They, they meet, and I think the first time that he went over the house, they decided not to move forward with it. They had just discussed it. And the guy was about to leave, and I think he caught up with him and said, you know, listen, if you want to go ahead with this, I'm still here. Fine. I want to say that either came back the next day or a couple weeks later or that came back that. He, came he, back went, to, he went for it. Came back to the house. Hmm. And um, he went for it. And I think that, you know, they discussed it for a little bit. And... Um, I want to say that it started, and I, and I apologize to the audience for how graphic this may be. If you don't want to hear it, turn it off. Um, I think they started in the bathtub, and he cut his junk off. Duh! Well, well that's not how I want to go by any means. You don't need that. Nope. Um, and after, well, hold on. After they did that, the they, guy started having second thoughts. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, they 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 made a thing of it, and he sat down. They cooked that thing together and mm. ate it together. Nice. Okay, this is creepy. True story. That's disgusting. Yeah. So oh, they ate so it together. Those freaking Germans, <clears throat> man! What a bunch of freaks. Have you? Did you look at Lois Jones? Oh, and that? you can buy the book on well, Amazon. I know, for but what? eight dollars. Uh, who was who was the guy though? It's not Lewis Jones. He had he had a, he had a German name. Let me look. Fitzen and Susan. right? Anyway, so they eat the, th- the then they go in the bathtub. The guy <laughs> the guy kind of bleeds out. I think <laughs> over the course of like a six to eight <laughs> six to twelve hour period, he bleeds out after they have their dinner. Right? <sighs> And um, the guy knew what he was getting himself into. He got his name. Yeah, Armin Mivais. That's right. Mivais, something yeah. like that. Yeah. This is all voluntary. So he bleeds out. He cuts up the body into pieces, freezes it in varying capacity, and, and eats him over the course of the next six months. Ugh. <laughs> Is that like the Silence of the Lambs story basis or something? No, 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 no. This was after that. Really? Yeah, unless he kept his skin as a suit. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You're not, big, you're not big enough. Your your back is not big. So he um, he was charged with murder, and the counter was the counter the the defense process the 
prosecutor says you murder the, the, the defense is basically look the guy volunteered for this this is not murder and he signed so he signed off on it mm-hmm. could you imagine the paperwork oh my god <laughs> oh, i'm sure it wasn't i'm sure it wasn't very <laughs> trying to hire one person let alone trying to get him to sign off I say, hey, i'm gonna eat your junk and we're gonna, <laughs> oh, we're gonna eat you way, over the course of six months i'm gonna stab you in the throat yeah i think he ate him over the course of however long before he got caught for doing it Ooh. and um Oh my God! And uh, he got charged with murder, and a lot. It was a big question about is it murder or not? The guy volunteered for it. I mean, uh, Doctor uh, Kevorkian still went to prison for murder. It was yeah. still assisted suicide. Yep, he did. This is basically not kind the, of the same thing, accidental. But yeah, he got he, he did got too. out and he died. He lived here in Michigan. Yeah. He did. Uh. Did you know that? No, I didn't know he lived in Michigan. Where did he live? He lived uh, local. No, hmm? you're probably right. Yeah, 100%. He was. Yeah. He was local. local. He, had a, <laughs> he had a van that they actually sold, I think, at auction a while back. Yeah, I remember seeing that for sale. And the creepy was that old, like his murder van? It was yeah. his murder van, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that probably sold for a lot of money, though. If you, have to, if you ever watch a documentary about Kevorkian, he, 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 he enjoyed it a little bit. He was much. a little creepy. He enjoyed, he enjoyed it a little bit I don't bit think he would be the guy that I'd want to be signing up to, like, off me, because I think he liked it a little too much. Well, yeah. I mean, you would have to be a sociopath to not feel anything after you watch someone die in front of you, and well, it, you it, were you had the hand, you were the one who actually made it happen. You I know? think he actually got a little no, but the, the, I mean, out the, of the, it, the problem, there's, oh, felt there's, good there's a documentary it, about it, and on the one side, your point, which is saying that, um, or, or both points. One was he, he felt he would say, "I feel like I'm assisting people and you know getting to a better place." And the other being um, that he he seemed to enjoy it a little too much. Yeah. Um, because assisted suicide is permitted in several states. So long, there's conditions to that, though. I think mm-hmm. Utah might be one of them. Right. I think him. you have to go to some sort of clinic or some like you, you have, have to, to go and, to a legitimate. And, and you've had place. to have live there for a couple of years, and uh, you can't just move there and, and, and do it. Did you find out? So he was born in Pontiac. Yeah. And he died in Royal Oak. Royal Oak. Beaumont. Huh. Um, the city it's that down we're the street from the city it. that we're in right now, buried in oh. Troy. Actually, so he died. Really? Mm-hmm. Is he bur- so he's buried nearby? Is mm-hmm. it marked? We got to go visit. Oh, I'm sure. Take a picture. That would be a creepy podcast for Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, it would. So he died <laughs> about what a mile or two from here. Yeah. Yeah. Bastard. <laughs> Why you wanted to get him on the show? No, I think he was just too into it. I, like I, I, I'm not against people who are suffering, having the right. I mean, we do it to dogs, for God's sake. We should talk about this mm. with Victor. I mean, when you put him in the grand oh, scheme yeah. of like serial killers, though, if he did enjoy it that much, he was definitely the least offensive because at least those people wanted to die, and they had really, really, usually, you know, life threatening or life ending things that were coming. To yeah, them. but I mean, didn't, didn't don't you think he probably targeted those people? Hmm. It's money. Probably. Probably ran a Craigslist ad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Things you Are can... you sick? Are you dying soon? Are you looking to die sooner? Call Dr. K. <laughs> it's like a Futurama <laughs> suicide booth. <laughs> I want to make it quick and I want to make it long and drawn out and painful. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> there may we do it to our animals. Euthanasia is a difficult Ooh. discussion, so I don't want to get into it today, but we, do. right. we, we don't let them suffer. Right, we put them down pretty quick. I don't get the whole death penalty thing, meaning I'm I'm all for it, to be honest with you. But you know, like why there's some such co- complications with it, I don't get. Why does it take so long? Oh, you could put your I dog mean. down in about two seconds. Oh. I think everybody's worried about you know um, taking an innocent life. Right. Yeah. That is really. That that, they really I think do that's it? what's. Did they? Yeah. That's what's happened there with that. No, the debate about it's been the suffering of the person. Oh. Innocent life is half of the debate, or at least a portion of the debate. Mm-hmm. The other par- portion of the debate is the suffering that the person goes through while they're going through yeah, it because it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's not working properly uh, and so on and yeah. so forth. Honestly, the drugs though, aren't kicking in. If you're planning on looking at your the rest of your entire life in prison, you're in your 40s or 50s, you have a long time to go, and that's probably a blessing for you. So, Yo, we watched that show, uh, I'm a Killer. 
And most of these guys are down for it. So I bet. Like Who it. wants to spend their entire They're life like, in prison what? or the rest I, of I, it? I, they finally come to terms. Sounds terrible. So I did what I did and I'm getting it, what I deserve. And it, But being on death row is more of, um, I don't know, what did they say? It's it's better care, better food, better, better everything. And they know they have years and years to go. Yeah. Well, that and they even sit on death row for years, so yeah. they're kind oh, yeah. of Some of these guys are getting on death those row perks for, for a really long thir- time. For like 30 <laughs> right. years. Yeah. And in fact, one of the guys we watch actually purposely put himself on death exactly. row. Exactly. Because the benefits are greater. Oh, yeah. He's getting, yeah, he's yeah, getting you, shivved in a power struggle on yeah. the cell block, right? Yeah, and all your you get, get good be, food. You get, you get to be alone. You get good food. You get three squares a day. You get TV, a TV. You get the right. whole thing: internet, webcam, porn, the whole thing. Just keep it really? feeling. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna Man. be in prison, <sighs> why not? No, he said, "Yeah, I'm fall for death row," but he sat there for thirty years. Yeah. yeah wow, oh, he had the cakewalk prison. Yeah. Oh man. It's like uh, Martha Stewart level comfort. Well, I think there'd be a little stress around your appeal times, you know. I think might, I might get a little worked up about that, whether <laughs> yeah. or not your appeal was going to yeah. come through. <laughs> In closing, um, I don't know what time it is, but well, am I getting a five minute warning today? No. Yeah. You're done. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm done. Yeah. You're done. What time is it? 9 01. 9 I want to ask one more quick question, please, Jessica. Yeah, go um, ahead. Cosby. Oh, Lord. Oh. Oh, well, we don't have to go too far down the, the rabbit hole. He's in prison. He's in prison. But I want to back up to 1984. Bill Cosby is in prison as a serial rapist. Mm-hmm. If those words have been said to you during the Huxtable days. J-E-L-L-O. Or that, or <laughs> what was the other one? I love my pudding pops. <laughs> oh, my Pudding Pops and uh, Fat Albert. You never would have thought. You never would have thought. And you know what? He does belong in prison, but also I do feel like he was made an example of whereas Harvey Weinstein is walking around free right now. That's kind of awkward. Yeah. It, uh, I think Harvey's going to get his. He's oh. going to run out of money to fight for I mean, I really now. hope so because he definitely should be there. So. Yeah, no, he's, he's going to get nailed. They're, they're, they're not going to. He's being made an example of, but he, uh, but at the same time, I mean, he, you know, whether it's true or whether it's not true. It's, it's, look, I, how many women came out against him? Like 60, 40, 60, That's 50, 60. And he drugged them. That's the thing. Yeah. I don't think Harvey Weinstein actually drugged anybody. Yeah, he was you know? more of like a boob he was grabber. Just kind of a, fuck grabber. Uh, yeah, he well, was like, a, if you hey. want this job, you'll have to do this. Yeah, I'm going to hold this over your head. Yeah. Which... No, so Cosby, he gave him what, Quaaludes? Yeah. And he claimed it was more than. But I mean, no, we're no talking about the 70s there. and the 80s. And yeah, everybody. It's, it, that, I think the complicated thing there was trying to figure out if the women actually wanted the drugs or if he yeah. forced them to take them. Yeah, we've had this discussion. And about, obviously. You know, uh, yeah. you know, what were you doing up in the hotel room in the first place? And right. Were you trying to make your way up the chain and so on and so forth? Look up, I've got to be careful about this. At the end of the day, Guys that need to know when to say, you know, that you're 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 in the wrong. You shouldn't be giving women alcohol, drugs, anything else. If you're if you're a gentleman of any kind, and a woman doesn't want to engage, get your fucking hands off. Period. Makes sense. Per- period. Right. Yeah. Doesn't matter if she's trying to get a promotion or or make yeah. her way into a film or, or anything. I'd say it goes both ways because now the Asian are gentle, but the, 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 forget about that. The fact is, the, the men have the majority of that control just by virtue of power, or physical power. But that or, power or, is shifting it now, so I mean, it should be on equal mm-hmm. terms both ways, either it should way, be. right? And also, women that um, make false claims about sexual assault and rape, et cetera, et cetera, should be in prison right. for trying to steal someone's life. So Thank what, you for calling so that out. You should not yeah. get a free Absolutely. walk and just no, be like, no, no. oh, well, she was lying. It's yeah, fine. No, Go I, back to your life yeah. and be free. I, I agree. No. That's pretty that's serious, fair. especially if it's well, unsubstantiated. Yeah. yeah, you're literally trying to steal someone's life, putting them, an innocent person, in a situation where... 
they have to deal with somebody mm. trying to kill life. them and, you know, they're in prison. You lose all your freedom. So if you're going to try and steal someone's life, you also also should lose all of your freedom as well if you lie about it. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah, you can't make shit up well, about people no. uh, that, that destroy their Same lives. Same for men. Yeah. <laughs> men and women. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and no, make false I, I, claims. Absolutely. Look, I mean, if everybody just fucking live legit, which will never happen. Unfortunately, it's no. Un, it's, no. Un, it's, un, it's unfortunate that people need to f- act so. Everybody's you know, out for fame and money. And, look, look at the guys. At the end of the day, if it's not welcomed, I sent you this app. You remember that app? What did I send you? You sent me a story about that app. Yeah, there's an app out there. It's there's like the you know, can, can I have sex with you? App. What? It's, so it's a consent app. It's a consent app. So the two people get oh. on this app, and then they say, yeah, we're going to get together and do our thing. So yeah, it's, uh, it's paperwork. No, it's paperwork. Pretty much. And a selfie. What? So you fill out this paperwork. So let's say, uh, you know, me and whoever are getting it on, and we're, like, all busy with it. Blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, you're going to bust out your but phone. Wait. But hold on a second. Jessica. Smile. Okay. You gotta. I'm gonna take out my smartphone. Wait. You know. Put your pants back on. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta sign this agreement. Well, at least put your top back on. We can. We can. You know. This. And then, yeah. so I have to sign all these agreements. Yeah. And then take a selfie. Thumbs Is up. it, it a, uh, like signing all these agreements, or you're just go through and going through and checking boxes? Like, yes, I want to do this. No, yes, it, I do it, this. it even goes to. Again, for the audience, jump away if you have kids in the room. It even went down to the detail of, um, you know, excuse, excuse me for saying, I'm just saying what the Say app it. says. Oh, what sexual acts you're okay with? Like, no, I said vaginal, anal. anal. Oh, so yeah, okay. mouth. Yeah. And like, you got to check off a bunch of boxes. We got to take a selfie together. Yeah. But but then on top of that, it was, well, then the issue is is that that was at that moment. And somebody had said something and crazy about how you could change what your what mind. What about if Jessica mm. five minutes later had changed her mind? I don't want whatever. It, that's not now recorded. That's why we should videotape everything. <laughs> <laughs> and who's going to store all these? Pornhub. <laughs> Pornhub. Amazon. <laughs> Pornhub. Pornhub will take God. it. Pornhub. No, no problem, I'm sure. <laughs> as long as you sign a consent form saying they can make it public. Right, sure. exactly. Yeah, well, we're, why don't we just all wear body cams? I want monetar- monetary compensation for every play that I get. You know, what was it? Uh, Sony or somebody was, uh, there was some company I read about a while ago that was looking to try and make recording contacts so that contacts would record. I mean, mm. you know, as we go along through technology, these things are going to happen eventually. And you, and you wonder why they open this this brothel. In I think so. Phoenix. The, I think the robot ones? In Phoenix. Real dolls. Oh, my God. It's a real, real doll yeah. brothel. That's, right. that's gross. That's no, creepy. it was Houston. Who cleans them out? I'm sorry, it was Houston. Oh, right. In between you says. I'm you, just you, curious. You do. I do not. <laughs> that is not true at all. <laughs> Worst job Fake news. Ever. I know. Could you imagine? Right? Oh, yeah, uh, Gerald just came out of here. It's uh, Jessica, clean up the room, too. <laughs> oh that would be the worst job. I always thought the worst job would be like a person outside of Little Caesars with a sign, but that definitely trumps it. <laughs> it was a little bit of a pooper, but okay. You know. <laughs> it was is it fart during sex guy. <laughs> I don't know. Right, Kirsten, edit out what you need. Yeah, we've gone off the rails now. <laughs> All right. Uh, it was good talking to everybody today, Kirk, as always. Always fun. And Jessica and Brittany. And, uh, always good time. Be grateful that you're not a brothel, robot brothel cleaner upper. Cleaner upper. <laughs> Janitor. Somebody's got to do that job. Sanitation by the way. engineer. How offended are engineers? Yeah, I mean, just really. Say sanitation. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel bad for the guys at the airport. They're like in their fucking cleaning up all your piss i'm always walking through going i'm so sorry while you're peeing for these no, there, savages no there's like 80 guys you've seen this going down there's the like line. 80 guys in line <laughs> and he's just cleaning up like stall number two and oh and the plane just unloaded from you know taiwan and everybody's 
been holding it for the last and like, uh, 16 hours. They so served was, ethnic food uh, on the... <laughs> yeah, they served ethnic food. I don't, we'll talk about bath. I have a book that's half done. It's it's true. It's called Men Unzipped. Oh, my God. Oh, no. No. What my, is, my book beats your book. It's called Men Unzipped. I, I, I've actually written... What is your book? About women's bathroom behavior. Okay. Oh, my God. Women So I started this book gross. a few years women ago. Women are disgusting. Called, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to hear... Disgusting. Kirk and I don't want to yeah. hear about it. We want to <laughs> think that you're all... We want, we'd love to think you're all beautiful. I'll read your book. Okay. It's called Men Unzipped. It's not out yet or anything. <laughs> well, you just said you're half done with it. Of course not. <laughs> no um, pun intended. <laughs> and um, it's about men's bathroom behavior. Because a lot goes on in there, as you know. Mm-hmm. you know. About between looking in the mirrors and not looking in the mirrors. And, and, going in and walking up right next to somebody and peeing yeah, right how, next how to many, them. Many, yeah. When there's stall- like four other urinals. How many stalls away should you go away? Invasion of privacy. So, uh, and then different conditions depending on if you're, if you're in the... The airport. So I wrote. I wrote this. It's about all about ninety pages in. It's called Men Unzipped, which sounds a little bit uh, dirty. Yeah, but it's not. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's a pretty cool book. Anyway, all right. Good tip for this week. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Right, it does sound like a dirty title. Title. Men Unzipped. <laughs> Do not no, tap your foot in the stall yeah. next to you. Don't. Oh, no, no, no. Right. There's. there's